Welcome back to the fifth installment of the innovation series. It's great to be here once again as we continue the conversation about innovation and change. My name is Sushil Rajaratnam. I'm the project strategist of the innovation series. I graduated from the TWA MA leadership program and have a background in project management. As COVID continues to affect people around the world, we have realized that merely adopting old solutions have not worked and there is a need to create our tailored mechanisms that make us resilient. There has never been a better time to think about new innovative solutions that can be implemented in education, healthcare, business and technology. We hope these short 45 minute sessions every second Thursday may give you a renewed sense of hope in the future and might even spark a new idea that will change the world. Over the past weeks, we have heard from our speakers about the impacts that COVID has had in their fields and the innovative solutions that they have adopted to keep businesses running and even create new opportunities for employees and students and their customers. Today, I am proud to showcase my own workspace and university, Trinity Western University, as a model on how universities have played a role in innovating, caring new solutions to keep students and staff engaged and connected and ensure they pursue their degrees and gain professional skills from all around the globe. In addition to the obvious health and safety challenges, COVID-19 has impacted universities around the world as they have transitioned to online learning, helping international students to gain access to learning across the globe and have tried to work with staff and faculty that access the university remotely. Trinity Western University responded to the pandemic by working diligently to stay connected to their students as they left their campuses in the early stages of the pandemic in March 2020. Teams of people at TW worked to support students and help them to stay connected in their education journey. 
The process led to the development of a concept that has been called the Connected Campus and is one of the main reasons Trinity Western University was able to grow in its enrollment by 6% during this pandemic year. Today is your chance to hear about this exciting innovation that has transformed how Trinity interfaces with its students. Our host, Dr. Phil Laird, will interview Trinity Western University's Senior Vice President, Brian Kerr, on the topic for today, which is the emergence and implementation of the connected campus at TWU. Welcome to the innovation space. Before we start, I would like to provide you with a few instructions. First, we learned from our first three sessions that our guests are from all around the world. Let's take a moment to welcome each other. We sure would like to get to know every one of you. We can all do this by typing in your name and location in the chat box. Feel free to chat throughout the session in the spirit of collaboration. And who knows, your conversations may lead to a new idea that we can build on as we progress in the series. We also like to welcome those joining us for the first time. If this is your first time, please let us know by typing your name and location in the chat box. Second, the Q&A portal will be enabled during the talk for today's session, which will be followed by an interview with the speaker. Please voice your questions in the Q&A slot and we will try to answer all your questions live. As we move towards the interview, we will select a few questions from the Q&A section and have them discussed by our speaker. You may include your email along with your query, and if we're not able to answer your question live, we will have a response for you later on. Third, please provide feedback in our poll at the end of today's session so we can keep improving these sessions. And please sign up for future installments of our innovation series. Now, please welcome TWU's Senior Vice President of Enrollment and Personal Care and Development, Brian Kerr. And welcome to another installment of the Innovation Series from Trinity Western University. My name is Brian Kerr. I serve as Senior Vice President uh, here at Trinity Western University. And today I'm going to be talking about something called the Connected Campus Program. So when COVID-19 hit uh, just over a year ago, um, a lot of things were thrown into disarray and we had to change and adapt quite quickly. And we recognize that COVID-19 is still having a profound impact around the world and in many of your countries, uh, there is a great, uh, great toll being taken right now. And so please know that our thoughts and prayers are with you uh, wherever you find yourself around the world uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic. It was about a year ago uh, when our students uh, were, were scattered all over the world due to COVID-19. And during that time, while it was quite disruptive, there were a number of lessons that we were able to learn about how we were structured as a university, uh, and we were able to apply those lessons to a new way of doing things. And so today I'm gonna share a few of those lessons and give you some insight into the ways that we're applying them. Now, we're applying these in a certain way here at Trinity Western University within the context of a university, but I think there are some things that are applicable to any organization or any industry. And so I'll share what we're doing here at the university and hopefully you find these things helpful uh, to apply in your particular situation. So it was March, 2020, and uh, there was news of, of a, a pandemic uh, that was um, on, the, on the verge of being declared a pandemic. And our students were about mid semester uh, in their studies here at Trinity Western University when in a very short amount of time, just a few days in fact, it went from business as usual, students here on campus in their classes, to students being scattered all over the world. We put together a calling station, uh, and here's a, a picture of it right here, our COVID-19 call center for parents to be able to call into the university from all over the world to find out what was going on when their sons and daughters had to move out of our residence halls, what was going on with classes, and so those phones were very busy in those early days It was as we were trying to navigate what was happening. In the midst of it, we had been planning for a massive on-campus event. Hundreds and hundreds of families were scheduled to join us from all over the world for an on-campus preview event to learn more about the university. And so that was scheduled to take place on March 20th. So about a week and a half before that, it became apparent that it was not going to be possible to have this large-scale event here on campus. 
Airports were beginning to shut down, flights were beginning to be canceled. And so we had to very quickly adjust what we were doing on our campus and turn our um, events scheduled for hundreds of people into a virtual event called TWU Live. And that brought together all of campus. And this was one of the initial things that planted a seed in the minds of many, many people across our university about what can happen when we work together in a very effective way in this notion of a connected campus. So in the span of about a day and a half, and it was right before campus shut down and before restrictions were imposed, in a day and a half, we filmed 40 interviews from across campus. We went to every one of our schools and faculties and departments and filmed personal interviews with them. And we got all of campus involved in this event called TWU Live. And instead of having about three to 400 families attend this event, we had well over a thousand people from all over the world attend TWU Live. And so the seed was planted that if we were to organize ourselves just a little differently and view things more as a connected campus and doing things as a whole, that great things could happen. Now, while we were getting ready for TWU Live, uh, for our prospective families, our current students were scattering all over the globe. They were moving all over Canada. They were in fact moving all over the world. And now we had about 5,000 students that were scattered across the globe. Their semester didn't end the way that they thought it would. And we didn't have an opportunity to ensure that they were properly registered for their classes for the following year, uh, to make sure that they um, were well connected with the university. Relationships uh, were quickly dispersed around the globe. And we really found we didn't have an infrastructure of, um, of systems and of people to keep track of 5,000 people that were suddenly scattered throughout the globe. What we did was pull together 50 of our top relationship managers from across the university. And it didn't matter what department you worked in, it didn't matter how long you had worked here, uh, whether uh, you'd been here just for a few weeks or you'd been here for 20 years. If you were a great relationship manager, we brought you on to this, this ad hoc team of 50 people. But what we found is that we had very fragmented systems and very fragmented databases. Our housing department knew a lot about what was going on in housing. Our athletic teams knew a lot about what was going on in athletics. Our financial aid team knew a lot about their department. But as a whole, as a university, we didn't have a good line of sight between the different services um, that exist across the university. We didn't have a good line of sight to the data and our systems weren't well integrated. And that was okay when we had the majority of our students here on campus because a student could navigate our various departments. But now what we had to do was find a way for us to navigate um, a network of students around the globe and be more connected as a university. So what we were able to do in about uh, two weeks is we, we pulled together um, using the Salesforce platform, we pulled together uh, a, a custom object within Salesforce to unite all of the databases across our campus. And so it looked something like this. So now instead of just each department knowing what was relevant for their department, we had this team of 50 people that were making phone calls to 5,000 students around the world. We called them all at least three times. So at least 15,000 phone calls were made uh, over the summertime. But now each and every person, regardless of what department they worked in, had access to information from across the university. So somebody logging in to call a student, they might be somebody that works in the library. But because of the way we networked our system together through the Salesforce platform, they were able to see that that student, in fact, played on the rugby team, that they lived in Fraser Hall, that they were involved in intramural basketball, how many semester hours they had, what their GPA was, what program they were studying. Previously, this information was only available to small slices across the university. And so this was another thing that we began to see the power and potential of because now 50 people from across the university had direct line of sight to the student to be able to serve them well. And so out of these lessons, very early on in the pandemic, we began a program called the Connected Campus Program to take this idea and expand it across the entire university to fundamentally change the way that we view our jobs, our roles, how we connect our systems, our policies, and our procedures, not around our departmental needs and around our departmental goals, but rather in light of the overall journey that a student is going through. And so in your organizations, or your companies or your schools, one of the key things that, that we learned that you may want to consider is how can you reorient your, um, your perspective from the view of your customer? 
It's the customer's journey that is the most important thing. And how can you organize everything you do in and around the journey of that customer? And that's what our Connected Pro Campus program is all about. So we're in the initial stages of launching this as a widespread uh, university initiative. And so I'm going to share a few things with you that we're doing that you might want to uh, glean some, uh, some intelligence about, uh, from and be able to apply in your situation. What we found was that we typically thought of our customers, and in our case, students, as being in very distinct buckets. We had a bucket of prospective students and certain departments that would work with prospective students. We then had a bucket of current students and certain departments would work with current students. And then we have a large number of alumni and alumni are worked with separate departments yet again. And there isn't great continuity between the relationships that we have with the students through those various phases. We tend to move them from bucket to bucket as strangers and those new departments that intersect at that phase of the journey now have to start from scratch to develop new relationships. And so we often see this in, in many um, organizations and companies where customers need to move from department to department and they may have to re-explain their case or re-establish a relationship for the next stage of the journey. And so what we're doing now, instead of viewing our roles and our departments as being focused on an individual person uh, in the departmental reality that we have, we're now thinking of this as an overall journey. So what is the journey that our student is going through? First of all, we're attracting them to the university. And there are a wide variety of things that attract them to the university. And so how do we understand all of those things and network all of those things together to properly create a student record that can follow the student all the way through. A portion of the students that are attracted to the university will be recruited here. They'll start their studies, they'll come, they'll be equipped for success in their careers and in their lives. And then after they graduate, we have an opportunity to, su to support them as they uh, move out into the various marketplaces of life and as they travel around the world. And then we give a student an opportunity uh, to refer students back to the university to provide support back to the university and for the university to support them. And this cycle continues. And so in order to do this, what we have to recognize is that while the student is going through a singular journey, there are so many different departments across the university. And in, in most organizations, there are many different departments and pockets that exist. And if everybody is just trying to do what's best in their own individual department, still with a mind to, to serve the customer well, but without a line of sight to the overall journey, then we're not able to uh, maximize the experience for the student or the customer that is moving through this cycle. And so our Connected Campus program is designed to network all of these areas together into common platforms, um, to, to integrate platforms where a common platform isn't possible, to give line of sight to every single department about what's going on with the overall journey of our particular customer or in our case, students. Now, what we found across the university, and this is probably the case in most of your organizations, hopefully all of your organizations, is that there is a strong desire to serve well. When we look at all of our departments, everybody has this common um, trait of wanting to serve the student very, very well. What we don't have, though, is an ability to see the overall student journey. Um, we tend to be quite departmentally focused or function-centric. One department finds the best way to do their particular thing to the best of their ability, but don't really have an awareness of what the departments on either side of them are doing. And so you might find that to be the case in your particular organization as well. We also have found that across uh, the entire university, um, when, when looked at it as a whole, there's um, somewhat of a, a low techni technical ability, and there isn't really a prioritization um, to network all of these things together. And so this Connected Campus program gives a home for those systems and those platforms and that integration that connect different units together. So the units, uh, business units can continue to focus on what they do well, and the Connected Campus program works to connect them in an integrated way. We're taking a look at the entirety of our student's journey. How do they get here? What are all of the influences that are at play? How can we capture information and data at every single point along the journey? When a student comes to the university and moves through the organization, we can't possibly predict all of the people they're gonna interact with, all of the activities, and departments that are gonna play a meaningful role in a student's journey. Each student is gonna navigate this in a slightly different way. 
And in your organizations, you may have many departments that your customers are able to interact with. And so what we're looking to do is to provide um, a, a system that networks all of these areas together so that a department on this side of, the, of campus or in, in this particular field of study has line of sight to what's going on in a completely unrelated area in order to be able to serve the student well that is before them. It also gives us the ability to know when a student needs help. We'll be able to see when a, a student's grades start to uh, drop a little bit um, and, and when their engagement in other student activities starts to wane, that may be an indication that we need to come alongside that student in a more intentional way to ensure that they are connecting well and they're continuing to thrive in their time at the university. So this is giving us the ability to take information from a wide variety of different areas across our institution and pull it together and analyze it in a way for the benefit of the student and the success of their overall journey. The Connected Campus program is more than just technology. It's not just a, a platform, a software platform. We're building it upon uh, the Salesforce uh, CRM platform, but really what we're using this is an opportunity to address that intersection between technology, data, people, and processes. And where those things intersect and where those things collide, that's where the Connected Campus program comes in to help people to understand their jobs in a new way, to begin to shift culture across the institution, to focus on the journey of the individual student that is moving through, uh, and also to do our individual roles uh, to the utmost, uh, utmost of excellence. The way we're doing this is we're taking a look at that overall student journey from end to end, and we're identifying the key systems and platforms that a student has to interact with. What are all the things that a person has to do, all the procedures, all the forms that are involved? Um, and we're looking at all of those different things and we're choosing the things that are the most relevant and would be the most helpful to network together into a common platform. And in our case, to network into, uh, into a, a, um, an all-encompassing Salesforce system. And so we're first identifying all of the potential programs. Then we have uh, a group of people that will work um, with those programs to prioritize them and figure out which ones we're going to work with first. And then we have some spin-off teams uh, that will work on the individual projects. And so our initial projects, we have six projects that have come out of this Connected Campus program um, uh, right off the bat. And so we're working on a new identity management program an experiential record which lets a student curate all of their um, <clears throat> experiences and opportunities from across the university and map those meaningfully to skills and competencies they'll need in the workforce uh, and then map those to their resume and map those to their LinkedIn profile. And so we're giving the campus a way to meaningfully contribute to an overall student record and we're giving the student a way to be able to collect and document all of their experiences in one central spot. And so uh, this is just a, a short list of some of the projects that we have on the go that are working to connect multiple areas from across the university, again, in order to enhance the experience of the student, ex and enhance the experience of the customer that is moving through uh, their time with us. And so we'll leave it there. That's a, a little bit about what we're doing in order to connect our campus using technology platforms, changes in processes, changes in culture and in mindset. And the, the fundamental shift that we're, we're making is an eye towards excellence in the overall student or customer journey while paying close attention still to the excellence within our departments. And so we'll turn it over to you now to interact with us. I'm going to join Dr. Phil Laird uh, and we're going to take some of the questions that you might have. So thanks so much for joining us and, and we'll talk more uh, as the questions come in. Good evening, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are all around the world. My name is Dr. Phil Laird, and um, it's my pleasure to welcome you here to this installment of our innovation series, where we're talking about Trinity Western University's Connected Campus. I'm here with Brian Kerr, Senior Vice President of Enrollment, Personal and Career Development here at Trinity Western University, and I'm excited to have you all here with us. Now, we're asking you to put questions in the question and answer space so we can ask the questions during this interview. I wanna make sure we're paying attention to your questions and asking them. And I'm gonna ask a question that I've got written down here first to get 
things going uh, in the interview session. And it's a real privilege to have you here with us today, Brian. Thanks for joining us. Great. Thanks so much, Phil. The concept of the question or the connected campus sounds simple. Um, you know, let's get everyone connected and get all the technology working together. I know it has been much more difficult to implement than it sounded in your talk, uh, in a 15 minute talk. What have been the biggest challenges you've faced in moving forward with this innovation for the Trinity Western University campus? Yeah, so I, I think um, as we've been moving this initiative from what started uh, out of a real sense of urgency this summer, uh, this past summer where our students were suddenly scattered all over the world and the semester didn't end the way that they thought it would, uh, we, had a, we had a built in sense of urgency and, and something to, to rally around. Um, that sense of urgency uh, created a, a culture that, that reacted to it and, and perhaps didn't behave the way it normally would. Um, there was something to, to work towards collectively and the sense of, um, of, uh, of um, cooperation uh, was accelerated. And it's not to say that people aren't uncooperative uh, in, in their everyday work, but uh, in the context of COVID, it was definitely accelerated. Uh, and then out of that, that sense of shared purpose and that new culture, then we brought technology solutions to help that culture to then enact change. And so as we've been now taking this from what was born out of a, a, a true sense of urgency into a sustained and, and ongoing a program and way of doing things at the university, the ongoing challenge is to make sure that we continually recognize and, and have that sense of urgency about it. Uh, and then to, to work on building the right culture um, in order to, to satisfy that collective uh, vision, uh, and then finding the right technology solutions in order to, to enable that culture to thrive. Um, so it's the, the ongoing challenge and the difficulty is to make sure that you're, you're ordering those things properly and not just dr jumping right to technology solutions or platforms, but paying attention to the much broader context that you're working in. Good. And, and of course, today, you know, you can implement change in very many things around the world, unless you're thinking about technology too. So if there's an integration between those two things in, in thinking about how we would change. I'm going to ask a question from one of our guests and, and there's nothing like a softball question to start off uh, uh, your talk. Um, Jacqueline Bay um, or Jacqueline Bay has a question and, and here it is. And I'm just going to read it from the screen in the pursuit of a connected campus experience. Do you feel you walk through Cotter's eight step process for leading change or have you sh had to shortlist the process or, or tighten up the process for expediency? Where do you feel are the gaps in this change process in shifting the culture of TWU and what is being done to narrow those gaps? Yeah. That's a it's a really good question, and uh, you know, and I'll make the distinction between the initial um, project that we worked on this past summer, and I think we went through a very accelerated, um, uh, rapid uh, cycling through of of Cotter's uh, eight uh, eight steps, and so um, where where he talks about having that that sense of urgency, uh, creating that vision, getting a guiding coalition, um, and enlisting a volunteer army, we had all those steps really in. in play in the summer, um, though we might not have been able to articulate them to, to a great degree, um, turning the whole project around within the course of, of just a week or so. And as we're now rolling it out into a more permanent uh, way of doing things, we're definitely working through each of those steps uh, uh, that, that Cotter talks about. Um, as a university, we, we have recognized the ongoing urgency that COVID-19 is presenting with us and, and that we cannot go back to business as usual. Uh, we have uh, a very different journey for our, our students and a, a journey that can be greatly enhanced as we work together. We have a new vision statement that was just rolled out officially yesterday at the university. And so we have this vision. Um, we have formed a, 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 a steering committee to be a part of this, to, to have as that guiding coalition. And we've been working our way across campus and, and, and getting buy-in um, from all across the institution. And so systematically working through Cotter's framework has been very helpful for us um, as we're, we're driving this change. Um, but in, in times of urgency, you sometimes have to perhaps shortcut some of those things, but I don't think you should ever skip any of them. Um, you might ha just have to do some of them at the same time uh, or in a more accelerated fashion than you typically would otherwise. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you a, a question that I haven't listed here and I don't have up there, but it's a question about innovation. And 
there's innovation that is strategic. You think, you know, we have to design a new iPhone and it's strategic and you design it and you go through a process and there's innovation that is emergent. You just have to do it because if you don't, you don't survive. Trinity Western University this year faced COVID-19 and we came out of COVID-19 with a 6% enrollment increase, which is unusual. There's not a lot of universities around that can say that we grew during this year of, of COVID-19. And I know the connected campus now is emerging, but sort of maybe connected campus 1.0 took place last summer, yeah. right? Can you talk about that innovation that is emerging? It just has to happen or you don't make it. And the experience of going through that last summer and how that's helped you to think through this concept of connected campus today. Yeah, the the urgency of the situation it, it was you know if we looked at, at where our students had had gone to and and the risk to enrollment um the the potential drop in enrollment was upwards of 30 percent um to our to our overall student body uh, which is significant and and that's something that would be very difficult to um to to come out of in a very strong position um so so the importance was was definitely there um the the um yeah, so it, it really opened our eyes to what, what was possible. And the beauty of what happened in that moment is that everybody collectively realized it at, at the same time. And, and so we had, we had a very willing community that, that was willing to do whatever it took. People's jobs had, had rapidly changed. Um, and it really gave us a, a sense of what's possible. Um, if we think about things differently, if we think about what is the need of the student that we need to serve, not what do we need to do with our, within our own individual departments or roles, because those are all up in the air now. Um, when, when all of our students moved out of the residence halls, uh, the residence directors didn't have a regular normal job anymore. The residence halls were empty, but those students still existed. They were just living all over the world. Um, our, our athletic coaches, our writing coaches, so it wasn't business as usual for anybody but there was still a very specific job that needed to be done for our students. And so how, did, how could we approach um, the time that we had and the needs that our students had from the perspective of, of the progress a student had to make during that time to finish their semester well, to feel supported, to know that there were solutions, to know that there was a campus that cared about them and to, to orient everything we did around those needs, um, not our, our typical day-to-day -day measurements of success in our own individual uh, roles. Great, thank you. I'm gonna to go to one of the questions that we've had asked. Um, this is from Mbenzi, Mbenzi George. Um, this TDBU approach sounds easy. I know it wasn't easy and we always try to make things sound easy, but what advice do you have for countries around the world, especially those in the South, um, who are struggling to re-engage their students using technology and may not have the same infrastructure that we have um, in order to make that adjustment to COVID-19? Yeah, I, I think remembering that that there is at least three layers um, to to this connected campus uh, concept, um, and the technology is is one of the layers. And the technology is is how how you actually go about doing what you're doing. But the first two layers are are absolutely critical. So regardless of what technology or platforms you have access to, it really starts with that that sense of urgency or that vision that, that you have. Um, and so you don't need any technology or any platforms to have that sense of urgency. The second layer is that culture, that cult cultural culture of collaboration, being willing to do what it takes to get the job done, willing to, to go beyond the bounds of what your written job description is, to work with, with people that you may not have worked with before. And that's all possible without technology. Um, so the underlying pieces uh, can be there and, and then you use whatever tools that, that you have. If, if that's phones, if that's writing uh, letters manually, if that's email, um, you, you use the technology and the tools that you do have access to in order to help the culture to thrive. You don't start with the technology and then decide what you can do with it. Right, that's a great answer. Now, last summer, we started to go with a phrase that we used, and this, this relates to the connected campus. It relates to your new role at Trinity Western University. And, and we, we started to use a phrase that said, the world has changed, your future hasn't. 
you know, the, and this is really important. The world has changed, your future hasn't. How does the connected campus con connect to the journey that our students have to go through? And it's not a journey that we've created. It's a journey that exists in sort of the existential experience of our students. They're going through, they're trying to find their way. How does the connected campus connect to that and resonate with our students? Well, the, the journey that a student is going through is a highly complex journey, and we can't prescribe that, we can't predict what that is. Um, a student is gonna go through a journey. Uh, one student may, may work uh, exclusively with, within their school or a faculty. Uh, another student may uh, have a lot of interaction with the student life area or with a, an alumni community. And so a student's gonna have a very, very diverse uh, journey through, through their time with us. And so the Connected Campus um, initially is really about building an infrastructure and the type of campus that is resilient and adaptive to whatever journey that student happens to take through and making sure that we're connected as a university, as staff and faculty to respond to the journey that the student is on and also to be able to serve the student to the best ability possible. Um, so it's, it's making sure that we have line of sight to what's happening on the other side of the institution. Um, what, what realities a student is gonna face before and after they might come across our particular area and making sure that we are nurturing and stewarding that relationship well uh, as, as an entire university, not just a collection of individuals having isolated and individual conversations or interactions with a student, but what's the collective journey that the student is on and what's the system we need in order to make that happen. Great, thank you. Um, I'm gonna ask a student from Sophia Oliver, and uh, I, I mean, uh, sorry, a question from Sophia Oliver, and um, I'm, I might rephrase a little bit of the question. Um, I'm proud to say that we work from our hearts when I see uh, what I have learned. However, in order to represent this type of working, working from our hearts, how can I come forth firsthand and face a corporate and multi-performance world out there? How do I deal with the fact that it's not just about heart, it's also about numbers and performance? Mm -hmm. And that's, a, a, I think, a, an experience of what the work world is like. Um, and we live in that world too. For you and I, you know, we talk about 6% enrollment growth. Well, that's numbers. That's that's, you know, um, enrollment, revenue, there's lots of parts to that. So how does someone think about working from their hearts, mm -hmm. but also paying attention to numbers and performance and yeah. balancing those things? Yep, absolutely. That's a, that's a great question, um, Sophia. And that's a, a tension sometimes that, that we have to live in. But I don't, I don't know that it, it necessarily needs to be a tension. Um, we're, we're called to do things with excellence. Um, we're, we're called to, to serve as many students as we possibly can um, and to perform at the highest level that we possibly can perform. And so it's, it's, that performance needs to though come, come out of the heart to serve well um, and, and to serve each and every student and to sh ensure that every graduate is equipped. And so there are metrics, there are numbers, there are results that are very important in that. But the reason that we're driving for those results uh, is to have that transform transformative impact in the lives of students. Um, if, if you come at it purely from the performance uh, metrics uh, perspective um, to to want to get recognition or want to get um, to to get fame or accolades because you're performing well. Well, that that's perhaps not not coming at it from the right perspective. But to truly view what you're doing as as making a profound difference in the lives of others, to do that to the maximum effectiveness and and for and with the most amount of people, you need some measurements and and some performance metrics in that to make sure you're doing it well. Right. Now we're, we're, we're coming close to the end here. So I'm going to ask one more question and I'm going to mix two questions. Uh, this is a, a mixture of a question um, from Derek Mohammed and Scott Macklin. So I'm going to mix, uh, put them together. So um, Derek's question is the connected campus strategy is a truly innovative idea. What are the greatest um, restraining forces you face or the greatest challenges? And then um, there's also the issue of the experiential record. So how does the Center for Student Work, Emergent Hopes, how do we build these things together to find how we would kind of connect it all together in the life of the learner as well? Sure. 
Well, those are good questions. Thanks, uh, Derek and Scott. I'll, I'll talk to Derek's question uh, first. I think the greatest restraining force that, that we face or the greatest challenge that we faced as we're, we're now mainstreaming this and making it more of uh, Im embedding it into the DNA of what we do is to continually remember that this is not just about technology and platforms and data. Um, this is this is about starting with that that vision, starting with that um, common point on the horizon, making sure that from that we're establishing the right culture in order to accomplish the vision, and then creating the the, the technology and and the platforms in order to allow that culture to thrive. And so that that challenge is to is to be so disciplined in remembering that it starts with vision, then goes to culture, and then goes to systems and platforms, and not be tempted by the next shiny new platform or the next uh, cool technology um, innovation that you could have. Not that those things are bad or wrong, but if you don't start with vision and work your way backwards, you're not going to be able to change culture by starting with technology. Great. And so that's an important piece. And Scott's referencing the experiential record, um, which is a, a new thing that we are, are launching at Trinity Western, which is um, giving a student an opportunity to, to collect and curate um, all of the, and reflect upon all of the experiences that they're having across uh, and through their time at the university and helping a student to make meaning of those and map those to the skills and competencies that they're going to need in order to thrive uh, in their careers and, and into life after graduation. So it's helping a student to say, what is the connection between my, my job in the cafeteria making sandwiches uh, in, my, in my student job and the student leadership position I have in a residence hall and the experience I had in an internship in my classroom? How do I make meaning and, and sense of all of that? And, and what was I actually learning? And what competencies was I building? Was, it, was, was I learning data analysis? Was I learning about teamwork or project management or problem solving or effective communication? But for, in order for us to be able to give the student the opportunity to reflect on those experiences, we need to be able to know what those experiences were. And that's where the connected campus comes in. So when a student logs into their experiential record, they'll be able to see all of the experiences that we know that they've had because we've stored those in a consistent way, we've tracked those in a consistent way, and then a student can choose which ones they want to reflect on, map them to the right competencies and skills, have them reflected on their resume, mapping them to their LinkedIn profile. And so we're connecting what are seemingly disconnected experiences, but keeping in mind the overall journey a student is on, why they came in the first place to be equipped uh, and to make progress in their career and bringing that to a, a very tangible point. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's the intersection of something very practical in the life of a student and why our connected campus has to be so well connected on the back end to be able to support that journey to the, the fullest extent possible. That's great, thank you, Brian. Now, the sign of a good interview is that the questions are flowing in and we can't answer them all so that's good uh, that means all that means is we're going to have to have brian back again um, there is a question from um dr william adem wingi from um uh nigeria and i'm sorry i may not have pronounced your name properly uh, and the question is what faculties are covered by trinity west university and i can answer that question really quickly trinity west university has um, a faculty of natural and applied science um, we have a faculty of humanities and social sciences as the two main faculties. And then we have a number of professional schools. We have a school of business. Um, we have a school of arts, media, and culture. Uh, we have a school of education, a school of nursing, a school of human kinetics. And we also have TW Global, which is an area that manages uh, international and global programs for students all around the world and a number of international and global connections. Those are our key faculties and schools. And um, Dr. William, if you'd like to connect with me personally, um, you can get my, my email after the innovation series and we can connect uh, live and talk further uh, if you'd like to. Um, I want to thank all of you for joining us for this installment of our innovation series. It has been great to have you here. We've got a great team behind the cameras uh, and you're going to see their names soon. So if you are from Trinity Western University and you see them on campus, you need to give them a shout out and thank them for all the work they've done in making sure this is a great episode. And we want to thank um, Brian Kerr, 
Senior Vice President of Enrollment for Personal and Career Development, who is here, or Personal and Professional Development, who is here to support us uh, in this innovation series as installment. And thank you so much. And we'll see you all again in a few weeks where we have uh, Scott Macklin coming to talk about online and multi-access learning. Thank you so much. God bless. That was an enlightening and insightful conversation on the connected campus at TWU. I am sure it instilled a new sense of hope and inspired our partnering universities, educators, students, and faculty and business partners here in Canada and around the world. Thanks, Brian Kerr, for your time and generosity in showcasing the connected campus lifecycle and sharing the process and tools and supporting structures that go into creating such a thoughtful and caring solution that ensure learners stay connected wherever they are. Dr. Laird, I want to thank you for moderating the discussion and capturing the questions from our audience and participants. Thanks to our amazing audience for shaping the discussion into what it was today and for your innovative views and suggestions. We realize that the education sector, which is one of the key sectors in running the global economy, has been directly affected by COVID. With the collateral effect of COVID hindering learners from going to their universities, universities have had to look for ways to bring the universities to students. The application of technology, wit, hard work and resilience and our basic survival instinct has helped enable us to design and leverage technology and break global logistical barriers. With quick considered policy shifts that facilitate international learners from having the option to commence their university education in their own home country, learners are teleported to a new country and cultural experience as they engage with their international peers in a cross-cultural platform while being in their own living room space. Innovation cannot take place without collaboration. TWU has been involved in such innovative solutions with the desire to impact the community around the globe. We hope you enjoyed the session. These conversations continue to give us insights into the new trends that are being set by organizations for engaging their employees and students which can be integrated and hybridized to suit tailored organizational and institutional needs, along with regional needs that are constantly shifting. As we conclude the session, we are reminded of the power and advantage we have as we devise collaborative platforms that foster cross-cultural knowledge and exchange. It's been our privilege to host you for the fifth installment of the 2021 series on innovation and leadership. For those who are students joining us for this session, please take the time to register for upcoming TW Innovation Series sessions and make sure we have your correct email and registration information as we will be sending out certificates to recognize your participation here today. We will provide certificates of participation for all future installments of the Innovation Series. We hope to see you for the upcoming sessions for the coming weeks. On May 20th, we are pleased to welcome Mr. Scott Macklin, Executive Director of Online Learning at TWU, who's going to give us great insights on online multi-access and distributed learning in a post-pandemic higher education ecosystem. It's going to be a great session. You don't want to miss it. We are sure you will be impacted in your innovative thinking and behavior as a result of these sessions. The link to the right of my name provides the web address where our next innovation session installments are listed, and we will be sending out emails to remind you of upcoming sessions. This is Sushil Rajaratnam signing off for the fifth installment of the innovation series. Keep looking up for a brighter future. Good day and good night.